the London Brewery for the open AI Dev of Day today. That is really good. So here I am, arrived in Open AI Dev Day. And uh, now this is the breakfast place. People are still registering. It's still early. Ooh, lovely breakfast. Everything is designed to give you a chance to spend time with the OpenAI team, but also with each other. Um, I wanted to start by talking why do we even do that day? Why do we care about the developer? Why do we have a developer platform? Um, OpenAI initial and each problem before it finally produces a letter. One of the first customers who tested O1 was Cognition. Um, cognition wanted to see how much more accurate we were already built with O1, from tackling very hard problems to building even complete apps. Um, and I thought, how about we kick things off by creating an iPhone app on stage from scratch? Uh, and we're here in London, so, so what you can see on the screen is a very basic Hello World project on Xcode, we just uh, started. And since we're in London, I thought, you know, let's really do quick take off and see what happens. <laughs> All right. That works. Yeah, so yeah, let's see if the buttons actually work. If they, the on click events will carry oh, yeah, them yeah. directly. Uh, I guess it's a good sign oh, yeah, for yeah. selfie. Yeah, it is. Uh, you can see the screenshot of the camera. I'll save it for later. Ooh, hello, awesome. hello. And also, I have a bit of a surprise me oh. button, so let's see what all one decided with this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ah, okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Interesting. Could you please uh, call them? Uh, for me, and maybe you could, if you could see if they could get us, say, like 200 pies, maybe a mix of meat and veggie options. Uh, but please keep the budget okay. under a, a thousand pounds. Perfect. How much would a hundred meat and a hundred vegetarian pies cost? Ooh, that's, that's a lot of pies. That'll come out to around, I don't know, 1,200 pounds? I don't know if I can go to 800, but I'll meet you at 1,000 if you guys feature us at your event. Okay, so at 1,000 pounds. Uh, yeah, so you said 100 meat, 100 vegetarian. Oh, um, where? With AI powered productivity tools like Cursor, customer service agents like Carlos, and language learning apps like Duolingo. All of these products and the outputs as the difference between asking the model to follow your format and constraining it. You don't have to ask nicely anymore. You can just supply the schema you need and the outputs will match. You might be wondering how to grade AI applications. When you're deploying to production, we gain this it's no longer about making something just work. It's about keeping everything running smoothly, affordably, and at scale. Hello, everyone. My name is John Howard. Uh, and I'm Steve Heidel. And together, we work on OpenAI's model customization platform. So we have- OK, this is the, this is the lunch, yeah? The lunch, and what have we got? We've got BBQ uh, ramen. BBQ ramen, and then we got we got vegetarian. Um, in the community about what they're building uh, on top of the tools that all of you are using every single day, and uh, that is the precious resource that we are guarding for you down here in the vault, which is uh, in this session four stories from the OpenAI uh, developer community. So my name is Mike um, with AI, and I work for a company called Hello. Um, we are doing contact center automation, and uh, just imagine you're calling into a telephone hotline, and how it sounds nowadays is usually press one for insurance, press two for contract. We'll try to do something a little bit more comprehensible out of this one. 
Um, I'm Alvin, I'm a solutions engineer at Dust. And Dust is a company that's basically an AI operating system. So we help you build assistance uh, with some synthetically uh, augmented real world data showing how developers complete tasks. The thesis behind this was essentially pre training purposes don't integrate examples of software engineers doing. Hello, I'm a software engineer working at Corona. I've been building Alan applications for nearly two years. So the product I work on includes like Klarna customer service assistance, shopping assistance. And in this session today, I would like to share the learning that I found. For the model to understand. Again, I'm going to process audio inputs just as well as text. And it can also generate speech directly without having to generate the text first. Right. Hi everyone, my name is Nina, I'm a research engineer at Torres, and today with Sal we're going to present our journey of evaluating our lens in a clinical application. All right, good afternoon everyone. I'm Jerry, I'm the product lead here at Sauna, and today I'm joined by my colleague Daniel, um, who is one of our AI lead engineers on, on Sauna here. Um, over the last year, we've been kind of entering the world of startups, I went to an art school, and during art school, I got really fascinated with building fun things with technology. This is a pair of glasses that I had that I screwed on a PCB camera. It's out there that are open source that uh, already can take an open API specification and generate client libraries for me. Like, why do I pay you guys six figures like to generate our SDK for us? What's this about? Yeah, um, if it's in the audience. And so I wanted to start with one which I don't think people ask you actually very often in the interviews, which is firstly, like, how are you? You are one of the busiest people on the planet. You also really look remarkably fresh. How are you? Fine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of get used to anything, and it has been like a sort of crazy busy last couple of years, but now it just feels like normal life, and I forget that it used to be otherwise. Okay, let's, I want to start by kind of diving in. We had a lot of fantastic questions from the audience across a number of different kind of areas. I want to start with actually the question of when we look forward, is the future of OpenAI more models like O1, or is it more larger models that we would maybe have expected of old? How do we think about that? I mean, we want to make things better across the board, but this direction of reasoning models is of particular importance to us. I think reasoning will unlock, I hope reasoning will unlock a lot of the things we've been waiting years to do. And the, the ability for models like this to, for example, contribute to new science, uh, help write a lot more very difficult code, uh, that I think can drive things forward to a significant degree. So you should expect rapid improvement in the O series of models, and it's of great strategic importance to us. So another one I think was really important for us to touch on was when we look forward to OpenAI's future plans, how do you think about developing no-code tools for non-technical founders to build and scale AI apps? How do you think about that? It'll get there for sure. Uh, I, I think that the first step will be tools that make people who know how to code well more productive. But eventually, I think we can offer really high-quality no-code tools. And already, there's some out there that make sense. But you can't, you can't sort of in a no-code way say, I have like a full stuff that I want to build. Um, that's going to take a while. So, when we look at where we are in the stack today, OpenAI sits in a certain place. How far up the stack is OpenAI going to go? I think it's a brilliant question, but if you're spending a lot of time tuning your AI system, is this a waste of time? Because OpenAI ultimately thinks I'll own this part of an application layer, or is it not? And how do you answer a founder who has that question? The, the, the general answer we try to give is, and you have to assume that we're biased here and talking our book and being wrong, but the general answer we try to give is we are going to try our hardest and we will succeed at making our models better and better and better. And if you are building a business that captures some kind of small, if we do our job right, uh, then that will not be as important in the future. If on the other hand, you build a company that benefits from the model getting better and better. If you know, an Oracle told me today that O4 was going to be just absolutely incredible and do all of these things that right now feel impossible, 
and you were happy about that, then you know maybe we're wrong, but at least that's what we're going for. And if instead you say, okay, there's this area where there are many, but you pick one of the many areas where L1 preview underperforms, and set up patch this and just going to get it to work, then you're sort of assuming that the next turn of the model won't be as good as we think it will be. And that is the general philosophical message we try to get out to startups. Like, we, we believe that we are on a pretty, a quite steep trajectory of improvement. And that the current shortcomings of the models today um, will just be taken care of by future generations. And, you know, I would encourage people to be aligned with that. So, we did an interview before with Brandt, and, sorry, it's not quite on schedule, but I think it shows that we've been successful when we kind of go a little bit off schedule. You have this, well, we're in the Indiana, sorry for that. Uh, there was this brilliant kind of meme that came out of it, and I felt a little bit guilty that you, you said wearing this 20 VC jump, which is an incredibly proud moment for me. Uh, for certain segments, like the one you mentioned there, that would be the potential for steamroll. If you're thinking as a founder today building, where is OpenAI going to potentially come and steamroll versus where they're not? Also, for me as an investor, trying to invest in opportunities that aren't going to get damaged. How should founders and me as an investor think about that? There will be many trillions of dollars of market cap that gets created, new market cap that gets created by using AI to build products and services that were either impossible or quite impractical before. And the there is this one set of areas where we're going to try to make it relevant, which is you know we just want the models to be. OpenAI employees, yeah? Good, good care, everybody. This is really good. Scott! Yeah, go up, go up, go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, everybody, there's lots of people with their phones. Don't yeah. take any notice of them. <laughs> yeah, look at him, he's the official. Yeah. Here we go. You're looking very, very miserable. <laughs> 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 Say cheese! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! 